I'm going to get a little tricky here. So we're going to look at another structure. It's called formamide. It's closely related to formaldehyde. I'm going to go ahead and draw the Lewis structure. I'm not going to draw just the line representation, but let's go straight to the Lewis structure. Now, I'm going to cut to the chase here. Let's, this carbon is much like formaldehyde. If you go through the whole process, that's an sp2 hybridized carbon. The real question is, what do we do with this nitrogen? Now, we've seen other atoms uh, like ammonia or other molecules um, that include atoms like the nitrogen and ammonia. And we said that lone pair, we could put it in a p orbital or a hybrid orbital. But in the, in the end, the best was to put it in a hybrid orbital and call it sp3. Same thing happened with water. We have two lone pairs on oxygen. They could or could not take hybrids. But in the end, we look at the experimental data and it seemed like the lone pairs in oxygen preferred to take a hybrid and made it sp3. So you might think this nitrogen in formamide, probably also that lone pair should go in a hybrid orbital and we'll just call that an sp3. That is not true. This is going to be an sp2 hybrid, hybridized nitrogen and that lone pair is going to require a p orbital and we're going to explain why that's the case. This is a, this is a, a different situation and it's important for us to anticipate this and recognize this. So I'm going to draw this structure. I'm not going to spend a lot of time counting attached atoms. We've done that enough. So to, I'm going to put this nitrogen carbon bond within the, the plane of the uh, of the writing surface to, to highlight it. This carbon is also going to be attached to an oxygen. You know, really, we should probably uh, wedge that. There's going to be a hydrogen coming off the back. There's the three atoms bonded to our central carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. We've already shown that this carbon, therefore, is going to, it's going to be sp2 hybridized. It's going to have a, a p orbital. That p orbital was going to interact with a lone, uh, I'm sorry, another p orbital and on that oxygen. It's going to make a double bond. We got a couple lone pairs on oxygen. Oops, I forgot them here. That is very important. We got to fill out the octet for that oxygen. So great, we've taken care of that part of the molecule. Um, now it's really this nitrogen. This nitrogen is going to be sp2 hybridized. Therefore, it's going to have three, it's three atoms, uh, bonded atoms are going to occupy a plane. And we're showing them there. If, if it's sp2, it's going to have a bond angle of about 120. And so this bond angle, and I could have also shown that bond angle between that NH and that CN bond, as well as over here. Those are all 120, approximately 120. Now this nitrogen, because it's sp2 hybridized, it's going to have three sp2 hybrids plus an unhybridized p orbital and that unhybridized p orbital is going to sit right here and it's going to contain a lone pair now why would this nitrogen buck the trend and want to put its lone pair in a p orbital where in ammonia and water we just said put them to put them in, in hybrid orbitals in general lone pairs prefer to be in hybrid orbitals unless there's a reason to put them into a p orbital. And here, as it turns out, if this lone pair sits in a p orbital, it's going to be able to interact with the neighboring p orbital on the carbon. This is an idea called resonance, which we will develop more fully soon. But it's a really common idea to encounter resonance, and it involves lone pairs next to other p orbitals. And so those lone pairs want to be in a p orbital. So in general, yes, lone pairs on atoms prefer to be in a hybrid orbital. But if they're next to an, uh, another p orbital, the lone pairs want themselves to be in a p orbital. And, and we'll see many, many examples that follow this idea. Regardless, this nitrogen is going to be sp2 hybridized. It's going to have a bond angle of about 120. And its geometry, the nitrogen is, is attached to three atoms, so it's going to be some kind of trigonal. And because all three of those atoms lie within a plane, it's trigonal planar specifically.
So that is the story with formamid. It's a little bit different from the water and ammonia examples that we saw earlier.